Hi y'all, I'm Kayla with Live Oak Nest. Welcome back to my home. I'm so excited you're here today and I'm so excited to share some beautiful spring crafts with y'all. So I have also joined another YouTuber. Um, her name is Teresa and she's with Our Green Acres and she's going to be sharing um, more beautiful spring crafts um, that you can do to decorate your home for spring. So I will put her um, her channel in the description down below so that you can make sure and go check her out. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So this first project that we're going to be working on is a wooden sign that I'm going to hang above our bed. So I'm using this color by Dixie Bell. Um, it's called Apricot and I'm using a lot of peach colors in my bedroom for spring. And so when I saw this color, I thought it would be perfect. So this sign is from Hobby Lobby. Um, it comes just like you see it with the gray. And so I'm just going to paint the gray solid in the apricot color and then I'm going to go in and add a whitewash on top because it was just a little too bright <laughs> for my liking. So I just mixed um, some white chalk paint and a little water and I'm just brushing it on and then gently wiping it back off. Bunny art that I decided to do, I drew it up in Adobe Illustrator and then input it into Cricut Design Space and used my Cricut to cut out my stencil. So once I had my stencil, I used transfer tape laid it down onto my artwork and I wanted to share this little tip. I actually had a hole cut in my, um, with my Cricut so that I could line it up to the center of my piece of wood. So you just want to make sure that you adhere the um, vinyl stencil to your wood really well, especially around um, all the outside edges so that your paint does not seep under your stencil. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just pressing it down firmly and getting it adhered to my piece of wood really well. So now that that's done, I'm ready to paint my sign. I'm using uh, Palace White by Jolie Paint. It is a chalk-based paint um, and I really love this brand. So I'm going to offload my brush in the middle of the rabbit and then kind of push the paint outward instead of um, unloading around the outline of the rabbit. It just kind of helps make sure that you're not gonna get a glob of paint to slip up under your stencil. So I'm just gonna fill this in really well um, and I'm going to give it two good coats and then I'll be able to peel the stencil up. So no matter how many times I've done this, I still enjoy peeling back that vinyl and seeing that nice crisp line. So I usually take it a little bit slow and I just wiggle my way back and forth, kind of pulling from one side and then I'll pull the other side um, just to help make sure the stencil comes up and doesn't take any paint with it. So you can go back with tools and kind of get weed into those um, little places that still have vinyl painted on and that's what you'll see me do. So I removed all the vinyl and there were just, I think three or four really small spots where the paint bled under a little bit. And so I'm just gonna go back with my original um, apricot color and touch those little places up and you won't even be able to notice. So of course, to finish off my bunny, I decided to add a beautiful bow. Um, this fabric is actually from Amazon and I'll make sure and link it down in the description, but it's a beautiful color. It's the peachy light pink color that I love. And so I just tied a bow and I'm actually gonna go back. Um, you'll see in the video of it styled and I put a little, um, like a half pearl right in the middle of the bow and I just thought it looked so sweet. I think it was the perfect finishing touch. So I love how this project turned out and I will show you how it looks above our bed. Thank you. 
So for my next project, I wanted to make over these cute little bunnies that I found at Hobby Lobby. I loved um, the look of the bunny. I thought they were really sweet. They have a sweet little face, but I wasn't too fond of the blue, even though I do love blue. So I decided to paint them um, and I'm going to make them kind of a champagne and gold color. So I've seen a couple of bunnies for sale on like retailer sites and they're kind of this, this, uh, cream color on the base and then they have a little bit of gold layered on top and so that was my inspiration for this and I'll pop a little picture up here and show you um, what I'm talking about but that's what I'm going to try and do here with these bunnies. So my first step is painting it um, in its entirety in this chalk paint. This is Waverly chalk paint. You can pick it up at Walmart and it is in the color mineral and it's a beautiful kind of putty um, cream color. I really like the color. So I'm just going to give this bunny a couple of coats of this and then move on to the next step. I have two of these little bunnies. They're a little bit different look, so you'll kind of see me working on them interchangeably. But once that bunny is dry, we can move on to the next step. I'm going to use um, this acrylic paint. It's a champagne color. This is from Hobby Lobby, um, but it's a beautiful gold color and it doesn't look too orange or brown. So anyway, I'm gonna use that next and we're gonna cover the bunny and I didn't do it solid. Um, I just kind of brushed it on without trying to push too much of the paint down into all the grooves of these, of these little bunnies since I felt like that would help me achieve the look I was going for. So once I had the bunny completely painted in gold, I went back with this um, bronze color. It's a chocolate metallic. And I just went in and kind of tucked it in to all the little nooks and crannies of the bunny. And I just feel like it really helped give it a little bit of dimension um, and just kind of make it not look quite so flat. So I loved adding this and I think it really turned out well. I'm going to slow the video down here and just kind of give you a close-up of how the finished bunny looks with that uh, chocolate metallic tucked into all those little crevices. So of course my bunny needs a bow. Uh, this color is a beautiful mauve color and it's also from Amazon so I'll make sure and link it below. It picks, it's picking up a little bit brown but it does have a pink hue or tint to it um, in person. So I'm just going to tie a little bow around this little guy's neck and then I'm going to tuck in um, just a little dried floral stem and I just think this turned out so cute. So for this next project that I'm working on, we are going to make over some terracotta pots. I purchased a couple of topiaries and I wanted to kind of jazz up the pots that I was going to put them in. So the first thing I'm going to do is use this Waverly chalk paint. It's in the color mineral, the same that I used on the bunny rabbits. And I'm going to put a good coat all over um, my pots. So once I have that coat on and it's fully dry, I'm going to mix these two colors. It's mineral and plaster, both Waverly chalk paint, and I'm just going to lighten up um, that mineral color just a bit and then just add on um, a second color to my pots just to kind of give a little bit of dimension and to not make them look, um, to not have them look just so flat. And when I'm doing this, I'm basically doing it in a dry brush kind of motion. I offload my paint onto a paper towel and then I just kind of brush it um, really lightly onto the pot and when it dries it's a very close color um, to the base color which is what I wanted. So once that's good and dry I'm going to go on to adding on my stencil. So this stencil is from a maker studio and it's a reusable mesh stencil. It's from the um, Le Petite Boutique 
stencil and you can cut these apart you can reuse them over and over again i absolutely love their products and i'm going to be using the chalk art in the color i reckon um, to paint on my stencil so you just peel it off of the backing and then it sticks and adheres down to your surface so I'm just gonna stick it onto my pot smooth it out really well and then um, press in this chalk art and chalk art is basically like chalk paint but um, if you wanted to wipe it off you could you could use water and wipe it back off but you can also seal it so that's what I'm gonna do on these flower pots So once I have this pressed in here really well, I'm just going to use my fingernail to lift up the edge of the stencil and just slowly peel it away. And it is amazing the quality of these stencils and how sharp um, the image paints on. Isn't that so pretty? Oh, I just, I love these stencils and I love all of her products, but um, this particular sheet of stencils is amazing. I love, love, love them. So once that chalk art is dry, I'm going to go ahead and seal it with the General Finishes Flat Out Flat Top Coat. So this is just going to keep that chalk art from rubbing off, it'll keep it in place. And I just do um, one to two coats depending on you know where you're going to put these. And I am putting in faux topiaries, so they're not live. If you do, you definitely need to seal your terracotta before you do any sort of painting and then seal it again after. So after that was dry, I decided I needed a little bit something at the top of the stencil and so I decided to put this little swirl um, decorative piece at the very top and this comes with that exact same stencil so I just cut it apart and placed it up here on the top and then I'm just repeating um, all of my same processes and the chalk art will go over any sort of surface and so I just laid it right on top of that sealer that I'd already applied. And then I'm gonna go back with one more coat of sealer um, just to seal everything in. So here are what the topiaries looked like before I put them in my pots. Um, they are a time topiary, so they're kind of sparse and airy, and I like that look. Um, so I'll make sure and link the topiaries that I purchased online in the description below, but they were just in a simple black plastic pot. And now this is what they look like. So I love how these turned out. I um, stuffed a little bit of styrofoam in the bottom and around the edges. And then I actu actually used just some white lima beans um, to fill in around the top that look kind of like white rocks. So before we move on, I just want to make sure to remind you to go check out my friend Teresa at Our Green Acres. She is so sweet and she puts out so many different projects and inspiration um, projects and crafts. You're going to love following her account. So make sure you go visit her YouTube channel and um, see what spring crafts and DIYs she's been making the last few weeks. So this next little project that I'm working on is this little um, pocket envelope that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I loved the color of it, but I wasn't too fond of the font of Blessed, and so I decided to just sand that down um, to make it smooth, and then I'm gonna put a fresh coat of paint on it and then um, kind of make it look more like my style. So I'm using Jolie um, paint for this project. It's in the color Eucalyptus. It's a beautiful sage green color, which is most of you know is my favorite color. Um, so I'm just gonna put a layer of this on and get it dried really well and then um, add a stencil. So I decided on this little bird stencil. I just thought it was so sweet. It's perfect for spring. I love all things birds and bunnies. Um, but these are a couple of the stencils that are, come with this um, sheet. And I love all of these. Obviously my brand name is Live Oak Nest, so I love anything with birds and nest. And the actual name of that stencil is just called Birds. So I'm just going to cut off um, the stencil that I wanna use, peel off the backing, 
and then um, adhere it to my surface really well and then add on my paint. So I'm using the color I Reckon in the chalk art from a Maker Studio. So it's the same color that I was using um, earlier. Okay, I always slow this part down because it's so satisfying, but I just think this is so sweet. I love this little bird. So, so cute. Okay, so next I'm going to add just a quick coat of the same um, sealer. So I'm using the General Finishes Flat Out Flat Top Coat, and I'm just going to brush on um, a quick coat just to make sure that that chalk art stays on there. And then I'm going to put a little bird nest in this little um, pocket. So I'm starting by adding in just some moss that I had on hand. Um, I'm gonna stuff this down in there and then I had some little bird eggs that I thought went well with the color scheme. And then I also had a couple of little feathers so I'm gonna tuck those in and then I'm gonna go in and just secure everything with a little bit of hot glue. So I'm actually planning on using this just like a little hanger, but I wanted to share this with y'all because I thought it would be a cute and pretty idea. So you could easily put this in a picture frame and hang it on the wall and then put a little bow at the top. You could use this in a wreath or just hanging on a doorknob. Um, and I'm going to show you how I have it displayed on a lamp. But these little pockets are so cute and I just feel like there's so many um, unique and different ways that you can decorate your home with them. So I also thought it would be cute to tuck in a few little dried flowers for springtime. Um, there are just so many ways that you can make this pretty and make it unique and custom to your home and your style. Okay, so the next project we're working on is going to be this little wooden plaque. I'm of course going to put a little bunny on here, but first I want to get this thing painted. So I'm just going to use my Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral and I decided to lighten it a little bit. So I added a little bit of the plaster and just mix those together. So the next thing I wanted to do was to create my art. So I'm going to use this little bunny here. This is a stamp from IOD, which is Iron Orchid Designs. And it's the first time I'm using this stamp and it recommends that you just scuff up the art side with fine sandpaper. So I'm using 120 grit fine sandpaper and I'm just going to lightly scuff up my bunny here. Um, and I think that just helps make sure that the ink adheres really well when you go to use the stamp. So I'm going to use um, this copper colored gel ink. This is um, a paint or ink from a Maker Studio and it is, um, it's awesome. You can use it on fabric, you can use it on wood, um, you can use it on so many different surfaces. So since I didn't have an ink pad, I'm just putting the ink down on um, this plastic tray here and then I'm using a um, circular sponge brush to just pat it onto my stamp and it worked out perfectly so if you don't have a stamp um, or an ink pad you can definitely do this and it works just as well so once I have my stamp inked up I'm going to actually press it onto this um, fabric so I got this cotton fabric at Hobby Lobby it's a light pink color and then I just simply tore it um, the size that I wanted so that I can put it onto my piece of wood and so now I'm just going to gently press down um, all over my stamp and make sure that it has good contact onto the fabric and then I'm just going to gently lift it up Okay, so now I'm going to put it back on my wood block and you can see I went back and painted it a darker color um, which was fine because I did use my sandpaper to kind of rough up 
and distress the edges of this piece of wood and I did it lightly enough that you can see the white paint underneath the darker color and I really like how that looked so um, I think that turned out really pretty. I'm going to use these little um, furniture tacks to secure my cloth to my piece of wood. These also came from Hobby Lobby in the upholstery section, but they're very simple to use. I literally just hammered them right in and um, it held my fabric with no trouble at all. So here is the final look at this little piece. So if you noticed, it went from gold to gray. I liked the gold, but once I styled it in my home, I didn't really care for the color. It was just a little too orange, um, the copper color. And I've used it on other things and loved it. So anyway, I decided to go back and restamp my bunny and I used um, the gray uh, gel ink from a maker studio. And I just like this look a lot better. So I love this little bunny. I think it turned out super sweet and I love the pink um, cloth on the background. Okay, so moving on to the next thing, I am going to make um, some floral art with this piece. So this frame is from a Weathered Wood Home, I believe, and she creates um, custom frames from reclaimed wood. So I'm going to use this as my frame, and then I'm going to um, create the art that goes inside of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop out the backing that is in here, and I'm going to use it as a template to cut off a piece of cardboard. And once I get the cardboard cut, I'm actually going to put a quick coat of white paint on the cardboard because the fabric that I'm going to um, wrap around it is very sheer. So I just needed to have a lighter background to work with instead of the brown cardboard. So once my paint is good and dry, I'm going to go ahead and use my fabric and wrap it around my piece of cardboard and then secure it with hot glue. So this is actually muslin fabric. I picked it up at Joanne's Fabric a while back. I use it in a lot of projects. Um, it's very easy to tear. And so I just cut a little piece and then um, rip it down with my hand. And then I'm going to go around, um, fold it all the way around the rectangle and um, glue it down with hot glue. So, so I decided I wanted to use um, a dried hydrangea floral stem for this project. I love dried hydrangeas and I had some left over from um, the fall season from around our community that we live in. So this is what I'm going to use for this little project. I love how simple this is. I also think it's really pretty because it has dimension and depth to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just glue, um, glue down my stem onto the fabric. And I'm playing with the bow here. I like to kind of lay it out how I want it to look before I start using my hot glue. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm just kind of placing it around, um, figuring out what I think looks best, and then I'll go back in and just add a little bit of hot glue. I didn't want my ribbon just to hang straight down, and so I decided to go in and just tack a few um, places up so I'm just using the tiniest little dab of hot glue and pressing it down to that fabric and you can't see it through the ribbon um, and I can also gently pull it off if I decide I don't want it like that anymore. So this is probably one of the simplest <laughs> crafts or pieces of art that I've done, but I absolutely love it. I just think it's so pretty and I decided to hang it under our vent hood because I don't have a wreath on top of the vent hood for spring. I decided to put one over on my big um, French doors. So anyways, I just love how this looked here. I hung it with the command Velcro strips and it works out perfectly. So I can just take it down if we're going to be cooking something crazy like spaghetti sauce <laughs> and then I can just um, press it right back up there without it damaging the tile or the frame. So those are a great option for hanging things on tile um, places like this in the kitchen where you don't want to hang a nail and a screw. Okay, so for this last little project here, I wanted to create something to put on my shelves um, that are in our kitchen. So I had most of it decorated, but I just needed a few extra little pieces. And so I decided to do this project. So I purchased these um, clear glass frames. These are from Amazon. And 
I decided to use dried flowers in them. So I got some dried flowers off of Etsy and then of course I had some of my own that I've just been collecting. Um, these here are the are some more of my hydrangea petals from my hydrangea stems. So I'm just going to kind of play around with this, use a bunch of different dried stems and put them in these frames. So I absolutely love how these turned out. And if you're drying your own flowers, this would be a very inexpensive um, project to do. But I just feel like it adds a spring touch when you don't quite have fresh flowers, especially um, this time of year. So here's a quick look at how these came together. I really love these. They're just so, so pretty. Um, I have more detailed photos on my blog. And if you have any questions, please just leave your comments down below. But thank you so much for being here today and for joining me. If you're new to my channel, I'd love to invite you to subscribe and follow along. I'd love to have you. I share French Cottage Farmhouse inspiration for budget-friendly decor, simple DIYs, and beautiful vignettes. Y'all take care, and I'll see you again soon.